Father, we thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we are here again even to learn. We ask, Lord, that you will teach our humble spirit by your spirit. Implant your word in our hearts, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, I welcome you to the 11th on our series on having what you say. Now, in the last post, we established from Mark chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, that Jesus rounded off his teaching on your ability to do what he did to the fig tree by giving us a caveat. And the caveat is that where you are making, where you are pronouncing or declaring or commanding things to change positively, that mighty power of God at work in you will be hindered or limited if you have any sin of unforgiveness in you. Jesus demonstrated that it is as you forgive others that God forgives you. If you do not forgive others, God also will not forgive you. Amen. Praise God. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, which is our focus for today, Jesus demonstrated the grievousness, you know, of, of the sin of unforgiveness in the sight of God. And this was in response to the question of, of Peter, you know, to Jesus, when he asked him how many times, you know, you know can a man forgive his brother when he sins against him? And in response to that question, Jesus gave a parable, you know, of a particular king who would no longer, you, you know, house a servant and was going to relieve him of his duty. And before relieving him of his duty, the king called him to come give stewardship, to come give an account of how he has, re uh, he has you, you know, accounted, uh, sorry, rewarded his stewardship, how uh, he has rendered, you know, his stewardship so far, you know, in his house. Amen. And it was found out that this particular servant of the king was owing the king 10,000 talents. And this was quite a lot, you know, in those days. And because he could not pay, the king ordered that the servant and his household, together with all of his properties, you know, should be sold until every debt, you know, has been recovered. Amen. And, and Jesus said that this servant pleaded. He asked for mercy. He asked for time. Amen. You know, so that he could gather resources and repay the debt. But the king, you know, out of compassion, forgave him and released him, you know, of the debt. Amen. Praise God. But unfortunately, this servant also had another servant under him who owed him just a hundred pence. And this other servant was unable to pay him the hundred pence debt. And so this servant that was forgiven by the king commanded that this other servant owing him hundred pence, you know, should be thrown into prison. And the news got to the king. And the king was so grieved that if he could forgive this particular servant of his, this steward of his, that owed him 10,000 talents, what hinders him from forgiving this other man that owed him just a hundred pence. And the king got so upset and the king commanded that he should be thrown. No, he should be thrown. The king commanded that he should be handed over to the tormentors. Amen. Praise God. And Jesus concluded by saying that this is what is going to happen to anyone who does not forgive his brother, you know, from his heart. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you compare the level of the sin that you have committed with the level of the sin, with the grievousness of the sin that you have committed against God, you will discover that this is highly infinitesimal. Amen. You may wonder, you may think, oh, this man, you don't understand. You, you don't understand the heart that this particular individual has committed to me. You don't understand the kind of offense that this guy has committed even against me. But what is that compared to the offense that you have committed even against God? Amen. The offense that you have committed against God cost God the life of his son. The offense that you have committed, the sin that you have committed against God, cost God and it is separation between the father and the son when he was on the cross of Calvary. This never happened to the relationship between the father and the son. But because of your sin, there was a separation between the father and the son, and the son on the cross of Calvary. And that's why Jesus cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. And so when you look at the grievousness of the sin that you have committed against God, you cannot compare any heart that anyone has done even unto you, you know, with the, with the grievousness of your sin against God. And that is why if God has been able to forgive you of that great debt of sin that you have committed against him, nothing precludes you 
you know, from forgiving humans of any sin that they may commit even against you because they can never in any measure be compared to, to, the, to, to, the, to, the, to, to the gravity of your sin even against God. Amen. Also, you also need to understand that the loser is the one who does not forgive. Amen. If you harbor a grudge or a hurt against anyone, you lose much more than the person who has hurt you. When you, when you, when you, when you, when, when you keep, you know, hurt in your heart, when you do not forgive, you are hurt the more. One is that God is not going to forgive you of your sins, and so you are the one losing. Two is that God is not going to release you from any bondage or captivity. And thirdly, God is not going to answer your prayers. Amen. And number four, God is not going to forgive you of your sins. And if you are not forgiven of your sins, you are in danger of spending eternity in hell and ultimately in the lake of fire. So it does not pay you to harbor grudges. It does not pay you not to forgive anyone who has hurt you, even if the person does not ask, you know, for forgiveness. It doesn't pay you to keep it because it hurts you at the end of the day. Unforgiveness opens doors for all kinds of calamities and sicknesses and diseases, especially arthritis and hypertension. Unforgiveness will open those, the doors, you know, to this ailment, you know, to attack you. And so it doesn't pay you. As God has forgiven you, as God has shown compassion towards you by letting his son die for your sins on the cross of Calvary, you should render the same. You should do much more than, much more than that to others. You should willingly forgive anyone who has hurt you from your heart. At the end of the day, you are the one who receives the blessing for forgiving those that has hurt you. May God enable you to forgive anyone that has hurt you in Jesus' name. God bless you.